Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now today it's my turn. It's time to meet my cheap play. So some of you may be thinking this PC looks familiar and that's because it is. This is the computer I bought off Facebook Marketplace that was in an absolute dire state and by dire state I mean it had been completely disassembled and chucked into three bags. Anyway, as you guys know, I got this thing up and working after fitting a new power supply. So let me run you guys through the specs of this PC and the upgrades that I have made. Firstly, as you can see, the power supply is the same 500 watt Corsair Uni that I used to test this. Now, I know you might be thinking this is overkill, however, it does give me plenty of room in the future to upgrade and add as many drives as I want without worrying about going over power limits. Next up we have our drives. Our boot drive is a crucial 120GB SSD which only costs £20 brand new from Amazon which I think is a cracking deal for the price. Our other drives for our media, these are two Seagate Barracuda 7200 RPM drives with one being 500GB and the other being 250GB. The 500GB one I bought from CEX a while ago for £10 and the 250GB was taken out of an old PC that was non-working. As you can see at the bottom of our case is a network card and the only reason for this is that we are operating system doesn't have the drivers for the PC's Ethernet port. This is a PCI uh, network card as well um, if anyone was wondering. Our graphics card is our trusty 9600 GT 512 megabyte that was featured in a video a couple of months ago and will be plenty for this use case. For the CPU which you can't see as I've got to take footage of it before I put it in the system is a Q6600 which has 4 cores and 4 threads and is running at its stock speed as well. It hasn't been overclocked um, which I also did a video on a couple of months ago. As you can see at the back of the case I have fitted a 92mm Arctic F9 silent exhaust fan. This fan is low RPM and low noise so should hopefully help with thermals and keeping the PC relatively quiet. So unfortunately we still only have 2GB of RAM and mainly this was a fuck up on CEX's part as instead of sending me standard DDR2 they sent me ECC DDR2. If you don't know what ECC RAM is and the difference is between regular RAM and ECC RAM, ECC RAM is made for servers so has different tolerances compared to standard RAM that we use in our desktops. This RAM's cutout point is very slightly different to DDR2. I'm not sure if all ECC memory is like this as I haven't had to use ECC memory before and I'm not too familiar with ECC memory. But as far as this PC is concerned, it doesn't fit. Now you're probably wondering what operating system we are going to be using for our Plex server. Now I'm sorry Linux and other operating system users, but I'm still going to be sticking with Windows 10. And the only reason is its ease of use, especially when setting up a server like this. Now I'm not going to go into great depths with how to set up a Plex server, there's plenty of videos out there explaining that, but we'll give you guys a quick run through the basics. Firstly, search Plex server download, head to the download for your operating system, which is ours being Windows. While Plex is downloading, make sure you've named your folders or drives the name of the type of media you want to store in them. As you can see, I have named OneDrive TV and the other drive films. When you open your Plex server, it will take you through a step-by-step -step process which is pretty start straightforward. When you have completed this, you will be brought to a screen. Navigate to the More tab on the right hand side. Then you will see your Plex server. As you can see, mine is named Gertrude the server. Then as you see, you can choose the tabs beneath TV and movies for your server. When you are on a TV or film section, you can click the three dots in the top left hand corner, go to manage library, then edit, and then you can select the folder you want that section to pull its media from. For example, 
change the folder to films to pull the films media to the film section on Plex. I'm only using this Plex server for media that I have on DVDs I already own as I need a way to watch these still without having a DVD player. Plex allows me to stream my physical media from other devices like a Fire TV stick or a Chromecast. As you can see at the moment I haven't got much media on here but I'm going to be working through my DVD collection and burn, burning them onto the server. Now you're probably wondering how do I do that? Now as I only own DVDs the file size is fairly small compared to Blu-rays. For this I use a software called Make MKV where it allows me to open the disc and make digital copies of DVDs but as an MKV file. This is why I have left the DVD drive in the PC. Now I know that MKV files aren't as easy to stream as MP4 with the H.264 codec files but as all my physical media is on DVDs it's only in 480p and it means it is just about doable on this server. If you can make all your files into MP4 with the H.264 codec as it doesn't take strong hardware to stream that but as you can see streaming at 480i or 480p MKV files from my server works well. You can see slightly longer load times but it's only a couple of seconds. If we look at our CPU usage which does the bulk of the decoding process of MKV files when streaming them we can see that it does have very high usage which can range from the mid 80s to 100%. However, it's very unlikely more than one person will be streaming an MKV file at a time in my household anyway, so I think it's fine for now, but I might upgrade this at some point down the line. Now in terms of synthetics for all you that like them, for the CPU we ran Cinebench R20 which gave us a score of 398, but take that as the worst case scenario as we also had a score of 480 at one point as well on the same CPU. We took this test just after playing MKV files, so that's probably why the score was a bit lower. If you want to see more about this CPU in depth, you can see my video on the Q6600 by clicking the i card above. So, to conclude, was this worth it? 100%. This is a great use for an old desktop which has seen better days and as you can see from the components they are dated and slow in terms of gaming but are great for this use case. As I said I will upgrade the server at some point but for now it's great and I can't wait to start using it more. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.